A video has spread on the internet in which eyewitnesses recorded a military cemetery in Tatarstan where Russian servicemen killed in the war with Ukraine are buried. The cemetery is overflowing with graves, which emphasizes the scale of the losses on the Russian side. The footage shows numerous Russian flags and flags of various units, which allows the site to be identified as a military cemetery. Comments on the video say that the losses are so great that people decided to film the cemetery and show it to relatives so they could see the scale of what was happening. The incident highlights the serious losses the Russian military is suffering in the ongoing conflict. Cemeteries filled with Russian soldiers killed in the war with Ukraine are rapidly growing across Russia. Earlier, a video has appeared online showing an eyewitness taking a picture of the size of a military burial site on a mobile phone. Social media users note that this is an unprecedented phenomenon as nothing like this has happened during Afghanistan or the Chechen Wars. The published footage shows a huge burial site easily identified as military by the flags of Russia and Russian airborne and marine units. According to conservative estimates by Western media, the number of Russians killed in the war has already reached several hundred thousand. Cemeteries of those killed in the northeastern military district continue to grow rapidly throughout Russia, a completely unprecedented phenomenon. The senseless and criminal war will leave behind a noticeable trace in the form of hundreds of thousands of graves throughout the country. Putin will die and people will wander among these graves and ask themselves, why was all this done? Why were so many people exterminated? And the only answer will be the gloomy cemetery silence. The Russian telegram channel Seattle Vetra commented on the footage. Короче, пиздец, Эдик, тут. Ужас. In Donbass, Russian invaders are seizing villages of 10 houses where no one has lived for 15 years. This was stated by retired Major Alexei Getman, a veteran of the Russian-Ukrainian war, on air of Radio NV. Getman spoke about the situation in the Donetsk region and the most threatening areas of military action. In particular, the goal of the Russian invaders is to capture Pokrovsk. The enemy has come very close to the city. According to various estimates, the occupiers are seven to 10 kilometers from Pokrovsk. Then it was stopped and there was no further direct advancement towards the city of Pokrovsk. There were battles, variable successes, positions changed. By and large, there was no advancement. Getman said. According to him, the enemy tried to encircle Pokrovsk from the flanks. From the north, this is the Toretskoy direction, and from the south, Kurako. He was especially active in the Kurako direction, firstly to straighten the front line because the Pokrovsk salient for the Russians turned out to be such that one could expect Ukrainian attacks from the flank, and then cut off the group, which then came almost right up to the city of Pokrovsk, noted Getman. At the same time, he commented on the information published by Bild about the capture of many settlements in the Selidovo region by Russians. Personally, I and many of my acquaintances during the full-scale war were in those places in Luhansk and Donetsk regions, and there were such small settlements that did not even have a sign. There are three, four or ten houses there. Perhaps no one has lived in them and has not lived in these settlements for a long time, but legally they exist. And when we talk about military actions and say that the enemy managed to capture or we liberated settlements, then it seems that this is a large number of cities and some serious actions, noted Getman. At the same time, according to him, it happens that these settlements consist of five houses in which no one has lived for 15 years. Every day in the news that three to four settlements have been captured. You know, the front section there is several dozen and the area there is not that big and there are settlements there. It seems dozens or hundreds. Once again, not the overwhelming majority, but a large number of these settlements exist, not in fact, but legally. They are registered on the map. There has been no one there for a long time, said Getman. Russian war correspondents complain that the Russian army now has to storm its own fortifications in the Kursk region, which were built to repel attacks from Ukraine. 
However, these positions were surrendered without a fight, and now Ukrainian soldiers are stationed at Russian facilities. This is what Russian military propagandist Roman Alikhine writes, publishing the words of one of the soldiers of the Russian Z Army. According to him, the Russians come up against the settlement of Darino and were unable to quickly pass through since there is a large stronghold nearby. It is here that there are several kilometers of fortifications underground which are practically impossible to take head on. A similar situation is in Plekovo, where for several days now, we have not been able to pass through the fortifications that were once built for our troops and which were occupied by enemy troops, writes the Russian Z War correspondent. He also claims that during the offensive, the Ukrainian military managed to successfully disrupt Russian communications, which forced Russian army soldiers to abandon their positions and flee, leaving their fortifications without a fight. This led to panic among the Russian military. Alikhine writes, Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky has acknowledged that Ukrainian troops are engaged in a fierce battle with Russian forces trying to take back territory in the Kursk region in western Russia. Russia announced that more than 110,000 people have been evacuated from the border region of Kursk in response to Ukraine's offensive, which has been ongoing since August. Tatyana Moskalkova, the Russian Commissioner for Human Rights, stated that a total of 112,337 individuals were evacuated from the Kursk region. She noted that just over 12,000 residents are currently in temporary accommodation centers, while more than 100,000 have sought refuge with relatives and friends. Moskalkova added that approximately 40,000 people either declined to evacuate or have returned to their homes. Additionally, she reported that 30,415 individuals, including 7,600 children, are housed in 960 temporary centers across 65 regions of Russia, many of whom fled shelling in Ukraine's eastern Donetsk and Luhansk regions two years ago. The incursion into the Kursk region by Ukrainian forces began on the night of August the 5th to the 6th, when they entered near the town of Sudza, located about 10 kilometers from the border.